Excellent. My name is Matt O'Brien. I am president of the Worcester Tea Party. And, of course, the most feared leader of a free education organization in the whole Commonwealth. No, it's supposed to be a left one. Commie. Commie. All right. Thank you, Christopher. Now, if I may have everyone be upstanding as you are able, as is our tradition, we will start this with a pledge to the to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Born and unborn. Thank you. Now to kick off this event, which has been the tireless effort of uh, a few people, I would say, I will now call up uh, Christopher Mader, publisher, editor, and uh, chief correspondent of the Meat and Potatoes Media Conglomerate. <laughs> You know, when I first started this entire concept of the Meat Potato Show in 2008, one of the very first things I did was not only meet people from the Worcester Tea Party, I met a great man, Brad Wyatt, who owned a building on Franklin Street. And on the eighth floor, there was the Love Revolution, the Ron Paul Love Revolution. Was invited up by some people. I can't even remember who. I don't. I don't know how. I just somehow ended up there. Talk, talk about an absolutely fantastic group of people. And if somebody had said to me back then, some Antifa, some ultra leftist, somebody had said, you know, they're a bunch of neo Nazis, I would have been like, well, what are you on? <laughs> the most caring, welcoming fantastic group of people I've ever met. Young, old, black, white. I swear to God there were a couple from another planet, but no. That's the part, that's the great thing about the Libertarian Party is everybody. Everybody. It doesn't matter. It's a welcoming tent. Unfortunately today, and I don't know how it's happened, it's one of the questions we'll pose tonight. I don't know who started it, how it started, but this is what happens when political ideologies go sour and go bad is you forget how and the why and you find yourself wrapped up into the what's happening currently. What happened in Boston, um, my good friend Brandon Navom and Dan Jackson were arguing about this, who said what, who did what, and I listened to that argument and that reminded me, it's like at, at, that point, at this point in time it doesn't matter anymore who said what, how it happened is that we're here now. And tonight, people that are going to be on this panel here are going to help dissect some of that, help go through all of that, lend some clarity to the conversation, and hopefully we can get some answers. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Jackson, Dan Fishman, Jason Ross, John Plant, Brad Wyatt, Al Hoffman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Come collaboration of the Worcester Tea Party, the Meat and Potato Show, and the Young Americans for Liberty as they kick off their 2017 event. Welcome everybody. <laughs> we will open up with everybody. We'll start with Dan. Why don't you give us a little introduction who you are and tell us about the party. We'll go right down the line. Good afternoon everybody. I'm Dan Jackson. Oh, make up. Um, so, I originally had something prepared tonight, and honestly, I hated it when I read it uh, afterwards, so I kind of just scrapped it, and I figured I would just talk uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one with everybody. Um, I'm the president of the Young Americans for Liberty chapter at Becker College, which is a small private school that not many people outside of Worcester or even Massachusetts have heard of. Um, but at Becker College, we've really started something special. What was five people about a year ago now, it's exactly a year ago now is grown into about a 25, 30 person network on campus and uh, many of those people that are members of that are here with me tonight. Uh, thank you guys for coming here. You guys have made a lot of this possible and I'm very proud of you all. Um, on top of that, I would just like to say that through this great chapter of people that we have uh, brought together, we've been able to um, have, for the first time that I've ever seen, 
in a private school, a group of people that get together and discuss points of view from conservative, liberal, moderate points of view, just in a room together. It's, it's, it's very rare to see these days in an environment that's very hostile to uh, any differing speech. So um, really, I'm, I'm just proud to be here and proud to uh, be representing a Young American Celebrity tonight for uh, Becker College. So, my name is Jason Ross. I'm the chairman for Massachusetts Alliance of College Republicans. We're the largest youth conservative organization in the state. We boast over 2,000 members in 22 different chapters across Massachusetts. Thank you. So, one of the big things we do is try and combat the liberal bias on campuses, and how we do that is through many routes. One route is tabling, where we get pretty negative response by the administration and many of the students. Um, but it's not, it's not just tabling at campuses, it's also connecting young people to different campaigns and opportunities, internships with interest groups like Mass Fiscal Alliance and other um, awesome organizations who aren't necessarily Republican, sometimes they're nonpartisan. But it connects them with a way to change the status quo in Massachusetts, the extreme liberal bias, you know, try to invoke more liberty-oriented solutions, more uh, small government solutions, and honestly, the right solutions, and the only solution. Um, and, you know, it, it's a great group. Before I joined, I was pretty shy in college. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to go into teaching, and then I realized how dominated it was by these liberal unions. And, you know, after student teaching, it just wasn't for me, so I started to look into political science, got involved in a few campaigns, and you know, not, not just found out what I want to do, but really got out of my shell. So whether if you join College Republicans or YAL, if you join YAF, if you join Turning Point, it doesn't, it doesn't matter as long as you're joining a group to make a difference. And, you know, I'm passionate about College Republicans. Um, and if you're interested, talk to me if you want to join. Thank you. Hi, I'm Al Hoffman, and uh, 10 years ago, and longer, obviously. I didn't know anybody in this room. So it's really great that uh, since that time, when Tea Party started, I've found a whole new set of patriots and activists. And I, I think it's really wonderful when new groups start. I've been involved in starting a lot of groups. Some of them have faded away. Others are pretty well known and pretty effective. Uh, the more groups we start, the better off we are but the key is activism. We can't just be a meet, eat, and retreat organization, whether it's the Tea Party, or the YAL, or any other group. We've got to be active with projects. And I'll tell you a little bit about one simple one I have here that uh, we really have a chance on. Uh, it's great that the Worcester Tea Party is a totally free event. That doesn't happen all the time. Last month, I wanted to attend a Lyme disease conference but when I got there, they said I couldn't come in because I didn't have a ticket. <laughs> so, Mr. T Party is entirely free. True, dumb, dumb, entirely dumb. free. Um, uh, rather than talk about the action project that I'd like to describe tonight, I'll just pass it on to the others, and uh, when we get a chance, I speak again later. I'll tell you just one simple but possibly effective thing that we all can do instead of just meet, eat, and retreat. And I'll describe a little bit about my reasoning as to why I think it's possible, and it may uh, irritate some people politically, and others may be pleased with it, but uh, let the cards fall where they may. But uh, thank you all for attending. It's a larger group than I expected. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hi everyone, I'm John Plant. I'm the state chair for Young Americans for Liberty from Massachusetts. I oversee uh, 26 of the student chapters, including a uh, dance chapter at Becker College. So I also had something that I wrote uh, just like Dan did, um, but I read it and I said, this is just crap. It's not going to be good. It's going to be kind of boring. So instead, I want to tell you more of a personal story. Um, so for me, I'm always asked, okay, like you're 25, you're a millennial, you grew up in New England, how are you more right-leaning? So for me, uh, people always assume because of 
how I dress, how I look. I grew up uh, very uh, wealthy or very well off. Not true. I grew up very poor. Um, and for me, uh, my parents were kind of succumbed to the you know, liberal uh, policies uh, during the Bill Clinton time. Um, and uh, they purchased a house that they definitely could not afford. And they went bankrupt and they were on food stamps and everything like that because it was given to them. But they were never ever motivated to move out of that because it was given away for free. Uh, so for me, to try to avoid going home, I, I spent a lot of time at the library. And at the young age of seven, I read the Declaration of Independence and fell in love with that document. And one phrase that really stuck out to me then and to this day, I, I always say it because it gives me so much hope and passion for our country, is that when, it's when it says, but when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object, convinces a designer using them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for future security. To me, that is my duty to provide more liberty for everyone in our country, and I take that very seriously. Thanks, John. So uh, I'm going to start off with a question. I want to know what the mascot is for Becker College. Hawk. 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 All right. Good to know. That's an important thing for me to know because earlier on, Chris was talking about uh, tents and big tents. So my name is Dan Fishman. I am the political director for the Libertarian Party of Massachusetts. I also have a radio show on WRKO, Liberty on the Air. And one of the things that I like to say is that if you're a fan of liberty, you don't believe in big tents. You believe that everybody ought to be able to look up and see the sky. And if you think that people ought to be able to look up and see the sky, then you're a fan of liberty. Now, I want to give a shout out to my friend down there who was starting uh, to be a teacher. I was a teacher for seven years. I was a special education teacher, and it was in Texas. Uh, at a time, point in time when there were a lot of cults in Texas, and if you remember the uh, Branch Davidian uh, fiasco, mm -hmm. uh, we had some kids come in there. And if you've ever met a person who's been in a cult, they have been programmed to not hear what you have to say. And so we had a specialist come in and talk to us about cult deprogramming. He said, I want you to imagine a scenario like this, that there's an arsonist, and when he sets fire to a building, he wants people to be trapped inside the building. So what he does is he dresses up like a police officer and he knocks on the door and he says, I want to tell you that there's a sniper in the area and he's going to try to trick you into coming out of your house, but you should stay in your house no matter what anybody says until the police come by and tell you that it's all clear. And then he goes around behind the house and he starts the fire. Now if you saw that, how do you get these people to come out of the house? If you say, oh my God, the house is on fire, you got to come out, you got to come out. They're like, no, no, no. He's trying to trick me to come out of the house. If you try to pull them out of the house, they're going to fight you even more. So what you have to do is you have to show them. You have to knock on the door and say, you know, I smell something. You smell something? I mean, it smells like smoke, but I'm not sure. And they're like, yeah, you know, maybe I smell smoke. You say, you know, over here behind the house, there's something and it's hot. And I touched it and it burned me. I'm not sure what they're like. Oh my God, the house is on fire. And then they would come out. But they've been programmed against it. Mainstream politicians have been burning down our collective house for the last 50 years. And it's time for us, people who are fans of liberty, to reclaim the government, to reclaim our heritage. And in Massachusetts, liberty is our birthright. The sons of liberty came from here. The most important thing that you can learn is how to talk to people about liberty and recognize that most people have been programmed against you. So I'm going to go back to the very first thing that I did when I started talking to you, and I said, what's the mascot of Becker College? I don't really care what it is, but I wanted to engage you. I wanted to build a relationship. And if you want to talk to people about liberty, you have to make it personal. You have to build that relationship at the beginning. And that's what I'm hoping all of you are going to be able to go out of here and do. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Dan, especially on the uh, cultism uh, thing. Some people would say that I'm part of the Ron Paul cult, <laughs> if you happen to know me. Um, but uh, moving on, 
About 10 years ago, I had a small business, New England Diamond. We manufactured diamond blades in Worcester, Massachusetts. Good job, good, good about 119 workers there. My dad started the company, and we just couldn't make any work anymore. You know, the high taxes, the high energy costs, high regulatory burden, all that just really contributed to kill uh, my business. Um, and so in uh, 2007, in the, in the fall, they had a uh, Republican presidential primary. And I don't know if you guys remember the different people, McCain, Ron Paul, all those guys. Uh, well, I heard this guy on stage, and I was like, wow, I agree with him. I agree with him. I agree with him. And he was for championing the Constitution and returning to our roots of small government. And so that's sort of when I joined the cult of Ron Paul, to go with the cult theme again. Um, and, and from that, I, I would say he absolutely cured my, my apathy. Before that, I really didn't pay attention to politics. I was too busy just running my business. But now, I, I do pay attention. And I want to know where not only the candidates I support stand, but most importantly, how they vote. Because there's a little secret. Politicians lie. They'll say <laughs> one thing and do the other. And it's up to these groups, Young American for Liberties and others, to get out how these people vote so that we can move the box in our direction and make sure these guys vote the right way. So that, that's really what I wanted to talk about. And then this beautiful thing happened in 2009. The uh, Democrat majority tried to push through uh, bailouts with Bush and then uh, Obamacare with Obama. And government just kept getting bigger and bigger. And the Tea Party came along. And there's a ton of people out there that aren't in this room that agree with what we're saying. And it's our job to help learn how to effectively train them, mobilize them, organize them, so we can compete at the ballot box and get our ideas you know, mainstream. Because right now, as Dan said, it's a cult out there, and if you don't have the group think, you're in trouble. I just flew back on a flight from San Francisco yesterday, and the bags, they told us to go to uh, uh, baggage lot four. And there's a hundred people standing around baggage lot four, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. And then we finally we realized it was really bad. It's a lot three of the things wrong on the board. But that's how people think. They think in groups. And it's up to us, like Dan said, to engage them, to try to get them to think properly. Thanks for being here.